Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Gentlemen, he's Larry Bubbles Brown. How's that for an introduction? Yes. Was that a big introduction? Unem- yeah, <laughs> the unemployed Larry Bubbles Brown. Now, yeah, now here's the problem with Larry. Well, there are a lot of problems with Larry, but here's the big problem with Larry. He's a comedian, and there aren't any theaters open. There aren't any venues open. Why? Because yeah. obviously they're indoors, and you have to... Um, uh, be in close proximity to somebody else. So, the theaters aren't open. I, did you Have you done anything? Like, some people are doing, like, uh, was it you that I talked to? Who did I talk to that was doing a thing in a, a, a drive-in comedy show? I know some comics that have done those. Those actually, I've heard those kind of work. Uh, the Zoom shows do not apparently work very well. No, no, and the Zoom's not a good idea. That, uh, yeah, but uh, drive-ins, I guess when people when people like a joke, they honk their horns and yep. turn the hotline yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. But who, who did I talk to did that? I think maybe it was Pearl. Uh, I think he was doing one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so he did one. Uh, and, uh, you know, people are finding ways to do it, but, I mean, the comedy clubs, they're not going to open for another year. Let's face it. This, this thing is just getting worse, not better. Yeah, Rob Schneider told me he just canceled his gigs for the next year because he figures it's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and if it does happen, then you can rebook him. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, it's just it's terrible out there. I mean, uh, it, but here's my question. Comedians need to work for one very important reason. To keep their skills up. Right. To keep their chops up. To keep their timing up. And to create new material. You can't do any of those things, right? What do you do? Get in front of the mirror or something? That's what some comics are doing. I did a gig outdoors in San Rafael a couple of weeks ago, and it actually kind of worked. But everybody, nobody had done a set in three months, so everybody was rusty and trying to remember the material and everything so that that does it is a problem yeah do you have trouble remembering material if you haven't done it for a while i i always had trouble remembering material because most of my bits are so short but, but isn't that amazing because you have such an incredible memory when it comes to certain things i have a memory for dates but i i never remember names i can't remember my material i always had trouble with the material really Maybe because I'm not comfortable on stage. I don't know, but it's just uh, if I don't think well on stage. Well, here, why don't you take one of your best lines, mm-hmm. okay, and do it here, and let's see if the timing's still there. <laughs> uh, someone stole my identity. Now his life stuck. Okay. It's, it's still Rushed there. It a little, but... It's still there. But still I heard there. that on the Letterman show 20 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> it's still one of your best lines, however. Yeah. It still works, yeah, after yeah. all these years. Yeah. Has your identity yeah. ever been stolen? No, I worry about that, but it hasn't so far. Yeah. Have, have you? Um, have I, has anybody ever tried to? I, not really. I think I had some kind of an incident where we had to, like, change my... Somebody was using a credit card number. And, and a lot of times when they use credit card numbers, it's not you that they're going after. They don't know who they're going after. They just found a random card number. Mm-hmm. And so they use that card number. But uh, I, I remember having to change my cards on an occasion because it was misused. I Oh, I know the one that happened. I, I um, suddenly got a bill for, I don't know, it was only about $75 or something. From some company in Hong Kong or Shanghai, I can't remember which, 
and it was like a gaming site that somebody had used my card uh, or used my PayPal account. That was it. So I got a hold of PayPal. First of all, I got a hold of these people who own the company who the card was used for and told them about it. And then I got a hold of uh, PayPal and I said, I'm disputing this. And they went into a, they went into an investigation and they agreed that I had not made that. So we changed my, we changed my password, I think is what we did on PayPal. And that made it impossible. But that's the only time I ever remember it truly being identity being stolen on some level. Yeah, that would be, uh, I wouldn't want to go through that. I got I got a residual check from SAG once that uh, I looked at it, and it was for something I didn't work in. Yeah. So I called SAG, and there, there was another Larry Brown, and his Social Security number was one digit different than mine. Really? So, <laughs> really? Yeah, so that was the guy... <laughs> The guy I'm talking to on the phone, he goes, what's your social? And he looked at it, and he goes, oh, my God, it's off by one digit. It's, yeah, but that, what are the odds an, of that? Wait a minute. You, but his name was Larry Brown, and it was off by one digit? What are, yeah, the chances, uh-huh. what are the chances of that? I know. You know, you've blown all chances of winning the publisher's clearinghouse sweepstakes now <laughs> because all coincidence has flown out the window on that one. Yeah, I I don't know. I just uh, I I'm amazed uh, uh, that I, I haven't had that much problem that way. Uh, occasionally, Gary will send me my you know my monthly stuff of that I put on like my credit card, and he said, "Do you, I do you know this particular item?" And yeah, it turns out it was an item something I bought online or something I. Uh, had to pay a, a subscription to or something like that. And uh, very seldom is it ever a problem. Uh, most of the time I can identify it. But, uh, you know, he lets me know when there seems to be an impropriety on my credit card. Um, but I haven't had that trouble in a while. Um, because I have the best pi- password going. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, password one, two, three. So... Uh, <laughs> You know, it's funny, but I would probably start using password one two three because that's the last thing somebody would try thinking that can't be it. You know, well, Although, wasn't that what the Experian was using when they got hacked? It was something, something similar to that. Probably, probably. Well, you know what it is. I what I don't like about having to have a password online is that they go, uh, you put in you know, okay. He, what's your what's your email address, uh huh? And what is your password going to be? And I put in something like password one two three, and then they go, "You've used that before, or you can't use that. It's you need a, 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 a uppercase and you need a numeral, or whatever." And I'm going, "You shouldn't give a shit about what I want as a password. All yeah. I should the only person who should care about it is me." And if I want something simple, like hello, all right, then I'm going to do something simple. And if, if somebody breaks into my account, well, it's my fault. But no, don't tell me it must be 10 letters or more, and it's got to have an uppercase, and it's got to have numerals, and it's got you know, to have a character like an, an asterisk or whatever. Bullshit. Let me take the chance, you know. Just like I felt about airplanes, you know. Let me have a choice of two flights, either the really secure flight where I go through the TSA and they check my bags and they check everything and they give me a rectal probe and all of that, or I'll, or an I'll take my chances flight where you just walk <laughs> down the terminal to the gate, get on the plane, and if it blows up, so be it. I took my chances. Yeah, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. I mean, how safe do we want to be on everything? So to ask me to do these things with passwords, hey, let me take it. I had one password I used for 20 years, okay? And then all of a sudden they started making it harder, and now I've had to adapt that password, and then sometimes I use one password and sometimes I use another, and now I have to have a password uh, thing that I pay for once a year, you know, um, so that I... 
I don't have to remember it. It just puts it into everything most of the time. But it's just... But you've never been hacked. I'm, have I ever been hacked? Not really. No. No. And you would think the accounts that would, they would hack the most would be like my iTube, YouTube account, my uh, yeah. uh, my iTunes account, and uh, Apple, you know, things like that. No, never, never. Uh, and um, But Apple's the one that, you know, if you want to change your password and you change it to a password you had once before, they won't let you do it. So you have to keep coming up with new passwords. I mean, I wish I could come up with a long password that's easy for me to remember. I got it. Bennett Schwarzman. Uh, <laughs> oh, no, there's no... You do a retinal scan. Well, we should be able to do that online. You know, we should be able... Like, I mean, when I'm using my, uh, my uh, uh, Apple wallet, right, and paying for something, all I have to do is look at my iPhone. And, really? it, and it says, okay, that's you. You're good to go here, you know. Uh, but the trouble is, where I'm running into a problem now, is face masks. Uh, they, they don't seem to like face masks much. No. Uh, uh, Apple has a, fa- uh, has a thing against face masks. Uh, so that's my biggest problem is face masks. Uh, and um, uh, uh, I, um, you know, um, so then I have to take the face mask down or I have to put in my password. So uh, It's just a pain in the ass is what it is. Could be an easier way to do things. Well, wait, what do you know from passwords? You don't have a computer. You res- do you sign on to stuff? I have to use passwords for my email, yeah. Yeah, okay. How slow does that take for you to get? That's pretty slow. <laughs> when are you going well, to get? When are you going to get a high-speed line in your house? I'm looking. Actually, I was going to ask you because I think Comcast has a uh, pretty good uh, deal right now. So uh, yeah, how much? How much hell will I will have to? Will somebody have to come in here and drill holes and shit? And, no, what? Uh, let's see here. You need well. What you need is uh, you need a uh, a line coming into your apartment, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, that, 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 that's very simple for them to do. They just put it in there, and you plug your. They plug a modem in there, and they'll do the whole thing for you. You wouldn't have to do anything. They'll bring the modem. They'll plug it in. They'll get it working, and you'll really? also, you'll also have Wi-Fi with it too if you want it. Uh, what will I do with that? Well, that you can get online. You can use your internet account without having to have a wire. Yeah, you know, it just does it wirelessly. But it's not as secure, right? It, it, it it's not as secure, but I wouldn't worry about it. I've never had anybody hack my Wi-Fi. Um, but, but I think you'd be okay, you know. But go get it. Oh, I got to get this done. It just. It's so if, slow, if you, it drives if, me crazy. Yeah. What kind of computer do you have? Uh, it's a HP with uh, Windows XP. Oh, God. Oh. I can't even go to many sites now because I'm on XP. Oh, jeez. We got we to gotta get, in, gotta get you into the... We got to get you into the 19th century. Jesus. I know. Wow. Wow. You're amazing. I'm I'm as uh, about as well. The California DMV is using computers from the seventies. Okay, all right. Well, then you should be able to talk to them. Yeah, I should. <laughs> Are they really using still using computers from then? Doesn't seem to make much sense. California is using the yeah from the seventies. They had to because of this unemployment unemployment too. So they had to. They had to find guys that worked for California in the 70s to come in and help them with these computers because they're getting such a surge of applications. Yeah. But it's some really old computer language they use, COBOL or COBOL, I don't know, something like yeah, that. Yeah, COBOL. Just... Yeah, yeah. Ah, wow. Wow. But so California, this is where we, this is the birthplace of that crap. We should have the best computers in the world. No? It, 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 
people at Apple should be so pissed at having to wait in line at the DMV for long times that they should have said, we'll, we'll do it for you. Yeah. You know, we'll <laughs> rewrite all this stuff for you. And they could probably do it in a minute and a half. Yeah. Hey, listen, I just looked at the uh, clock. Time's flown by. Well, there's this little hand that goes second by second, and I find that we now have 20 seconds left. But uh, anything you want to say, Larry, or are you just happy with having said enough? I've said enough. I just uh, I was hoping this uh, virus would be over, but I think you're right. We're in for another nine months or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well... We only had uh, we you know how many deaths we had in New York? this is just, we we're running over here but how many deaths we had in New York on uh, Sunday? I thought it was near zero. It was zero. It was zero. It was ten for the whole state. So and before you were having like hundreds a day, right? Oh God, we had eight hundred people dying a day here. Jesus. Yeah. Anyway, Larry Bubbles Brown. We'll talk to you next I'm week. Not happy note. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk to you next week. Okay. Bye, Larry. Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Bop. Okay. All right. A little, little, little uh, stalling there uh, because I push, I pushed the thing, and it didn't play it. Hmm. So there, we had that, and then I pushed that. Oh, and then nothing, nothing's playing on that. Even it's playing, but it's not working. Oh well, I know why. I bet you I know why. Let me just just play here for a second. Well, that's the reason why. Okay, uh, because I didn't have the sl- uh, the uh, the um, uh, uh, the slider up. See, they're supposed to go. Now in our sixth year, yeah. this is GabNet, yeah. the great Fast. American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. That's what I wanted you to hear. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, how y'all doing, folks? How you how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Uh, good to see you. Uh, am I bright enough tonight? Yeah. I guess that looks okay, uh, you know. Let me see here. Let me, I just, you know, I, I uh, constantly am trying to tweak things here on the show, and then I do them, but I uh, sometimes uh, don't do them enough. There we go. Let me give it a little more. There we go. Okay. Hello. Ah, yes. All right. Now we look good. Okay. Now, he- see, unless you're watching us, you don't know what we're doing. If you listen to the audio version, you're going, what's he talking about? What's he doing? What's going on here? I don't know. I I heard Larry. I didn't have to see him. <clears throat> anyway, you never. We're probably never going to let you see Larry. I would imagine, because Larry is uh, he he refuses to get into the 21st century. Okay, and he doesn't have any way we can show him with video. If he just, I have offered him a I've offered him a cell phone for crying out loud. Anyway, let me see here. Let me. Uh, there's some people who want in right now. Robert Natali is wanting to get in. Is is Howard Wallace? As is Howard in Hawaii. Uh, okay, there we go. That's uh, that's a beginning. Hello, everybody. How are you? Good evening. Very well. Yeah, yeah. There they yeah. go. Here comes Phil Meyer. He's jumping in. Yippee yippee fuck. Um, there we go. And, and here's Phil. And there's Phil. And let me just uh, go over to our Zoom because if it's, it, nobody just wants to look at me, you know. So, how are you all doing? Good, good. I'm pretty good. How about you? Robert? Alive and well. Robert, good to see you for the second night in a row. Thank you. You were a terrific and guest. Third day. Yeah. Third day, yeah, because third he did a, our little Monday get together in the afternoons. Uh, but don't tell Phil about it, because then he'll call that show. Yeah. <laughs> nah, no time. I actually work for a living. Yeah, good, good. I'm glad you do. I wish you worked late. Anyway. Um, I can. Hmm? What? Uh, I can work late. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I come home uh, after a 14-hour day. Uh, you know, I get up at 4.30 in the morning. Do you really? Uh, well, you have, yeah. to, you have to go get your cancer treatment thing. Right, you know? and I've got to prep for that cancer treatment. So the cancer treatment's at 7.30. It takes me about 25 minutes to get there. And the rest of the time is all prep. 
This is li listed here now as guilt. What is it? Guiltified 12 galaxies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to call you by these names now, you know. I'm guiltified. Because I'm not very good at remembering names. And so I'm, I, I'm, I was so happy when all of a sudden I had all these names that come up when, we, when we're doing our show. See, folks, those names? Uh, like, uh, but uh, anyway, th th hello to you. What is that again? Gil gil guiltified? Guiltified, 12 galaxies. Oh, what what is your mom? Your guy walking around San Francisco for like 20 years with the sign. The signs always change, but it's something to do with uh, yeah. 12 galaxies, guiltified, and yeah. all, it doesn't ever make any sense. Yeah. Uh, hello there, Rob. Hello, how are you? Good. Look, look at that professional broadcast organization he has there. Yeah, that's I'm, awesome. I'm all form and no substance. I'm all jealous. I'm <laughs> jealous. Uh, how much those monitors cost you? Uh, what monitors? These? Mm -hmm. Oh, these cheap things. I don't. I thought you meant. I was oh. thinking like the audio. Did monitors. you have them already? Yeah. I, the only thing I really did was this, and I bought a mic processor, and I bought. Um, a composer for pro post processing, and yeah. well, I, I bought a bunch of odds and ends. Tell, tell stuff. them where they can find your little station, okay? Um, you can. It's tough to find uh, because I don't have a website anymore. Why is that? Uh, because they wanted too much money, and it wasn't worth it. Well, wait a so, minute. So, how much money what, did they want? Uh, I don't remember. It was. Um, it was through the company. What's the name of that? Daddyo or something? GoDaddy. Go I use GoDaddy. Yeah, they want to. It's like I'm not paying that it, it much. It went money up every to month. mine. Went up to one hundred and forty-five dollars a year now. That's not bad. A, a year. Yeah. Yeah, this is like yeah, the hell with it. I just and, got, you know, the, I got I just, the latest bill for it. Yeah. So I'm using Facebook as like a home page, and mm. there's really not much on there because I am bad at social media. But I, I, I'm also listed on a radio.net, the app. If you go to radio.net, there's an app, and yeah. the radio station is called Retro Rocks, one word. Yeah. And um, there's, you can listen to it on the app. Well, also, I mean, uh, you know, we should talk about it, but I, maybe I can just put it on my GabNet page, you know, just so that there's another place for people to listen to you. Because if, I, if I'm simply doing a link to somebody, it doesn't matter whether I'm paying for the music or not. That's yeah. true. You're not the... I, no, I'm, you're not, I'm not the host. You are. Right. Yeah. So. Is that how it works? Yeah. Yeah. I, if I'm, if, let's say I, uh, I, uh, I put a link to something. Uh, that, I don't have to pay for that, for the link, because the link is out there. Uh, but I do have to put uh, pay for it if I am originating it. In other words, if I were to start playing music here, and I do pay for certain music that we play here, which yeah. is the, the production you know, music. The production music, and that that cost me now. That's gotten pretty pricey. It's gotten up to about two hundred dollars a year. I bet you. So I got to get you to do new promos uh, for me, just so we can pay for the uh, the you know make it worthwhile having all that uh, music available. The way you run into trouble is with uh, is with uh, YouTube, uh, you know, because well, no, that, YouTube is a pain in the ass. But if yeah. you took the show and then you posted it to YouTube, you'd have a problem. Well, uh, if I did it on my account, okay. Here, yeah. here's the thing. The other day, I ran a promo here for mm. uh, COVID nineteen, and mm. it's a great spot done by the state of New York, saying "Mask Up America" with Morgan Freeman. And I ran it because it's a public service announcement, right, Rob? That should be completely in public domain, right? And if it isn't, they should be very happy I'm playing it. Yes. Right? I get a thing saying, sorry, we can't monetize it because the music is in copyright. Now, wait a minute. To begin you with... Know, you could probably fight that. I could fight it, and it's, I would probably win, it. and they would probably let that show be monetized, but the next time I ran that thing... They'd do the same thing, and I'd have to write them another letter. And then after that time, another letter. Wasn't another. That, that music was licensed by the state of New York or whomever produced that yeah, COVID Yeah, that's correct. Spot. That's correct. But and they, you're just playing it yeah. as a, a public service message from uh, the uh, 
advertising. Yeah, but what they've got, see, what their problem is, they've got um, a, a machine there that just listens, yeah. and if it hears yeah. something that they think is in copyright, they automatically yeah. ding you like that. That's right. And then you have to protest it, say that you don't own the music, but the, you have the right to play it. It's in this case, it was uh, what what's called uh, <clears throat> fair usage. Uh, but you know, I don't even know that it's that. It's it's out there. I I mean, I rem even back as far as college radio when we didn't have. Commercial, well, my argument would be it's already been paid for. Yeah, we ran. They're just public service announcements that the states <clears throat> put out in conjunction with the advertising bureau. And if they use music, if you it's, use their them, use them. it's their responsibility, not right. ours. But you see, that's I right. have to explain that every time to you two. Yeah, so and that's it's why a it's pain in the it. ass. So I haven't. You know, I, I could do it again. And then I would write him a letter and blah, 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 blah. I did write the ad console and ask them about it because they're the ones that release mm -hmm. it to the public in general. And I never got a reply. So, yeah. Uh, do you, uh, if you have too many of these with YouTube, do they put you on a list no. of uh, no, troublemakers? No, no, there are, there are, there are things that will get, get you a major copyright ding. And then other things like this that don't count against you. They, in fact, they write you and say this is not counted <laughs> against you. It's just you can't monetize it. But if they, if it was a thing that they count against you, that would uh, eventually lead to being banned. Yeah, or probably, banned. probably. But I, but I've never had that happen. I've never, I, and I've had uh, quite a few dings that way where I've used music and whatever. But mm -hmm. it's never. They've never. Uh, they've always said, uh, "Don't worry. You know, this isn't counting against your uh, your account or whatever." So, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, Alex, here come, do you here pay comes, for your opening theme song? Do I pay for the, uh, that? Is part of the package that I buy. Right. I see. Yeah, you talk. You're talking about. Uh, uh, gee, I don't know. Well, I, the closing theme we have here, which is uh, this. That's right. that's out of a production package that I, I buy. See. Yeah. So, and so is the theme song for the show. So, is how many theme? songs are in a package? Oh, I get. We get. They have. Well, how many would you say? Thousands? Yeah, that sound effects and whooshes and yeah. production elements. It's a whole website. Yeah, and I pay about, yeah. I think I'm paying about 150 a year for that. I year. And I pay another 150 a year for the video stuff. Wow, that I, you, the you, video really, package. you really go so for your lungs, don't you? Company, that's the same company that does the audio and the video. Right? Yeah. Well, they I, yeah, but they do it right? as two separate packages. You don't buy it as one complete package. So, mm. you know. Yeah, what the hell, you know. I thought I remembered years ago um, doing a, like being in a high school production mm -hmm. and being told that because there wasn't a profit being made that there wasn't any need. Well, that to, was the old days and this is the yeah. new days. It's changed. Before the is internet. That, is that well, oh, really? Well, before, before the, uh, the Digital Millennium Copyright yeah. Act, mm -hmm. which I see. Th that's what did it, you know. Uh, but and, and radio stations actually did it because they started simulcasting on the internet, and uh, everybody started saying, "Wait a minute, they're playing our music," and and talent was saying, "Wait, they're playing our spots, and we're not getting paid." And I see everything had to be started the whole thing at that point. But the thing is that really, you know, if you're re if you're if you're paying for the music to be on your radio station and then you're simulcasting it on a uh, 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 website, um, you shouldn't you have, to have to pay, pay a pay. second time for it because. Yes, it be, you do. Well, let me put it this way, Rob: If you were an AM station and you were simulcasting on the FM, would you have to play, pay a second time? No. It's a different medium completely, though. See, One is the internet. I claim it's the same medium. I mean, because it's coming from the same source. It's not like you're changing it for the internet. But and, you're broadcasting it in a different place, and the yeah. internet gets that's the digital. That that's the digital part of it, right? Yeah. That yeah. doesn't cover the over the air part. Mm. I know because I've been doing a lot of research into, uh, you know, starting. I'm not doing it yet. I mean, um, I'm still. I have to get all my music put in. You have to. You have to. I, I would like know. to. I would love. You know, I would love to be able to buy pay pay for the right to play music, uh, with a non commercial license and whatever. But it is so it is so it's five hundred bucks flat, yeah. But it is so complicated the things you have That's to do in order to do it. You have to list every song, everything. You have to 
the, wow. you have to tell the album that's on. You have to give the label. Yeah. Wow. So there's all this research to go in and uh, and set it up so that when you print the reports of what you record yeah. or of what you've played, then you you can't play two artists back the same artist back to back. Uh, you have to separate by an hour or something like yeah, that. Yeah, uh, at, at Sirius, this will give you an example by they're not playing the same song in a period of time, same artist in the period of time. Uh, uh, Sirius, couldn't, you could never play the same artist uh, three songs in a row. You could only play two in a row for that hour. All right? So they come up with the, the Sinatra channel. Mm -hmm. Imagine they could only they could, they could only play Sinatra twice an hour. You know, so it's called so, Sinatra it, and Friends. Yeah, so that that's how stupid those <laughs> rules are. I think there are a lot well, of people. Wait a minute, the Billy Joel channel played all Billy Joel. They have a Springsteen. Well, one they too, may no. have gotten his permission to Maybe do it. Maybe that's why. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. that's probably why. Because um, uh, he was involved. There was, in the there was a time where you could play older records, no. but. Yes, the fluorescent leech and Eddie. You couldn't, the turtle. You couldn't uh, anymore. They, it was they, it, everything. Everything prior to I forget what it was. Seventy two or something. Something like that. Yeah. And, and then that changed. Got sued of uh, uh, the, the group, the fluorescent leech and Eddie, which is one of the turtles, right? It's Flo and uh, Eddie. Flo and Eddie. Flo and Eddie. Flo and Eddie. And uh, the, that uh, that lawsuit then gave them monetization for. Uh, prior to 72. Well, right? they, they sued as individuals, I think, about uh, Happy Together, which was a turtle song they yeah, did. Yeah. Uh, and it, they weren't getting any money for it. And they felt they should. And, uh, you know, but there was a time, I, I can't even go back and play stuff from the 30s. No. Oh, really? Yeah. The 30s? It used to be. Wow. It used to be. There was kind of a cutoff date. There's no that. public domain. Mm -hmm. There is in movies, right? That's the old movies used to see. No, on the public late domain 19th. doesn't exist even in literature. This, it, it, public domain, I think, does not exist any longer. Wow! In, in the wow. in the that. way we knew it, it does exist if it was never copywritten in the first place. I'll, I'll give you an example, a very interesting public domain thing. The I'm first the first nineteen episodes, first nineteen episodes of Star Trek, they failed to copyright. Wow. So wow. that's why you saw so many versions of it coming out on, on tapes. Some of them were a little blurry, and they were taken off TV and things like that. But uh, that's what that was all about. The mm -hmm. only thing was they finally decided, well, we think we found a caveat that would prevent them from stealing the shows. And what they did is they said, the music's in copyright. Hey, uh, 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 Alex, what, uh, what type of program do you use to copyright your shows? They're not copyrighted. They're put into a, a free uh, where it can be shared. Uh, uh, it, it, what is that? What is that? Uh, um, what's his name? Uh, uh, Plotkin uh, uh, and Lawrence Lessing uh, put that thing together where things could be used in the, uh, the it's not it's copyrighted, but it's not copyrighted. Well, uh, you do this with the show. Yeah, it's a uh, common... Uh, uh, yeah, common... Not common cause. Common. Uh, some, some, I can't remember. There are, two, there, are yeah. two, there are two ways I can place this on YouTube, and I can't remember what the two ways are right now, and I'm not about ready to well, go into my programs and you, figure it out. You interviewed Hal Plotkin, and his, he was instrumental in setting that up. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, be that as it may, it's all a pain in the ass. I don't care if anybody steals this shit. You know, I do care if somebody uses my likeness or my my programs to make a buck, however, and then I'm I'm very funny about that. Uh, so I can run your programs on Sunday night as well, public affairs. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a good example. On, on retro rock. Uh, my my interview my interviews with John and Yoko a few yeah. years back. A I read that a um, auction house in England was going to be auctioning off. Uh, tapes of a, of a rare interview of John and Yoko. And when they described it, it turned out it was the interview I was doing and what they were auditioning off were two seven-and-a-half-inch reels when I had sitting in my uh, uh, closet ten-and-a-half-inch reels of the show, wow. of those shows, The Masters. And uh, I got a hold of them, and, I, and they said they were going to get $300,000 for it. 
And I, and I said, wow. I don't know what you think you're selling, but I've got the originals sitting here. Okay, I said, okay. that's for starters. Secondly, you don't have a release from me, so my performance isn't, isn't uh, mm -hmm. releasable. Uh, so if you sell this to people, what are they going to do with the tapes? Find a machine and play them for themselves? No, they want to buy them so they can use them, right? Aren't they actually owned by ABC? No. No, because ABC uh, never copyrighted them. So it's 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 a, it's like a record. So I couldn't have uh, a record of Let It Be, uh, mm -hmm. not the original, but just what are you an album, about? What are you and then it's not, sell it. It's not a record. It's, it's, I know, I know, it's not a record, but think no, of well, it. As, no, 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 no. It, what I what, what, what how I'm holding the copyright on that is mm -hmm. nobody has a release on my performance. Right. But okay. Let's say I went and bought a a vinyl record. Uh, and I know yours is not a vinyl record, but let's say I bought a vinyl record mm -hmm. and I sold it mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, at auction because it was a rare record. Mm -hmm. uh, I, would I have to have releases no, for that? No, or, because you're oh. selling it privately from yourself to somebody else. You're reselling something you already bought. It may be right. worth more now because it's rare, but mm -hmm. it's yours. You own it. That's not the same situation. You're not with selling, the but you're not selling the rights to that other person uh, to take that performance and duplicate it and use it somewhere. Okay, so yours had uh, supposed rights uh, along the with only it. right that the only rights that existed on the John and Yoko interviews was yeah. the fact that I'm on it and they don't have a release to use me. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, they could they could probably auction off the tapes. But yeah. that wouldn't make any difference. So I wrote how about them and I told them. They cut it up and they and then they and then to really screw them over, I took the John and, and, and Yoko interview, and I put it up on the internet, <laughs> and I told everybody they're trying to get three hundred thousand dollars for this. It's free, and by the way, if you want to download it, yeah, you know. And I just what happens if they cut you out and just use the sound bites of John and Yoko? Uh, there'd be nothing to hear because I'm I'm so integral to the discussion, you know. Because when I do an interview, it's not really an interview; it's a conversation. Yeah, it's a conversation. Yeah. yeah, and it would be very difficult to do that. And uh, yeah, they could, you know. But uh, uh, so what happened was a couple about a week later, there was an item in the paper that this auction house has pulled the John and Yoko interviews off of being auctioned out, and they were never auctioned again. Okay, so, uh, and they didn't even have the original masters on that. This was like, I think what it was, I may be mistaken, but we made up some seven and a half inch copies, I think, for John and Yoko to have copies. And that somehow may have slipped out through somebody who worked for them or whatever, and that's how it was getting sold, you know. But it Speaking wasn't a copyrights, there, there was a rumor that I've seen in about two or three different places. So I can't say for a fact that it's true, but it, it makes for a good story nonetheless. The Washington Redskins, you know, the big flap with changing the team name because yeah. of the, yeah. you know, yeah. the slur and so forth. Right. Well, what they did was they were polling fans and asking them what logical uh, team names could be. Mm -hmm. And somebody found out what the top 10 responses were and ran out and copyrighted those. Yes, uh, yes, I heard about that. Yeah. I but see, he also I, I, I he see, had a caveat I see, to that, yeah. saying that he did that to protect those names and whatever one that Dan Snyder wanted, he could have free. Oh, oh I see. Oh, that's he a different He twist. did that to stop people from oh, he was trying to make a lot of money. Yeah. And but Rob, he's a big fan, I, and that's I, why I, he did I it. That's see, what he I, said. I said, suggested the Washington woo-woos. <laughs> but by the way, to, as of tonight, they they're the now Washington the football team. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which told me maybe that rumor was true, and they were afraid yeah. to have to pay the guy. But if you say otherwise, that's it, what I I, I, I heard well, on why don't they uh, do, sports talk. Why, why don't they do what Prince did and just call the team formerly known yeah, as the, the Redskins? Formerly Skins. known as the Redskins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, somebody, Alex, somebody mentioned that. They, that uh, thing, Hal's thing, is called Creative Commons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And what does that mean, Phil? Uh, there, he, he established a thing where uh, you could put intellectual property into uh, register it with the Creative Commons, and then it could be used free for like universities. If you had a book, I see. I, see. And, uh, uh, yeah. I, I think I use Creative Commons. If I'm not yes, mistaken, yes, 
I, I noticed that you did. I mean, I, I can just, use the other one, which is just a straight copyright, you know. Yeah. But maybe I should do that. I don't know. I every don't program? Huh? You have to do every program? No, it's just when you put them up there, you know. You know, the only thing about copy, let me tell you about copyright. You, you know, you say, what do you have to do in order to, what do you think you have to do in order to copyright? You put the symbol and it says copyright. You got to mail a letter, right? You got to mail something to the copyright office. I'm not sure. Well, you're pretty much, uh, Phil was a little closer. Uh, all you have to do is say copyright in the year. Yeah. Okay. Copyright by and then the year. That's all you have to do. You can copyright it through the copyright office, but you don't have to. Just by saying copyright, you're holding the copyright in place. You, you're, you can also put it in your metadata. Uh, so it's buried in the, it, it's not shown as yeah, copyright. But that's not important. What I'm saying is, is that uh, that's how you it, simply it. by me saying, hey, listen, ladies and gentlemen, this show is copyrighted by Alex Bennett in 2020. All right. Now it's automatically copywritten because the copyright is being held in place by the fact that, in fact, you cannot copyright anything without first putting the copyright notice on the uh, the thing that you're trying to copyright. Then you can copyright it. See, in my camera, I'm able to set up a copyright so that's... We don't edited. care about your camera. And then I could give a uh, certain <laughs> kind of... We don't people. care about your camera. Well, does oh, your logo kind of have a copyright on it? Um, huh? Does GabNet have a copyright on it, uh, the logo? I, I, uh, no, it has trademark. Trademark. TM. That's another thing. You put TM mark. there and it holds it in place. But if you look at uh, GabNet, uh, let me see here. Do I have it uh, anywhere here? Usually I put a TM next to it. Jeff's got an Yeah, attorney. yeah. If you look when it says, all you have to do is Wait, once. Head. Hold on a second. <laughs> once yeah. on the page, uh, all you have to do, let me, let me show people here. All you have to do on a page is you only have to do it once on a page. If people look here, here's my GabNet page, all right? Nothing says copyright, but a trademark, trademark. Until you go up here and it says GabNet on demand, and the GabNet has a TM. And that holds it in place. They don't like you doing it like every time you mention GabNet. You just only have to do it once on the page. So, uh, therefore, it is trademark. Uh, right, Jeff, so yes, yes, Jeff. Yeah, my my understanding of how to use a PM and and to apply for a patent. Mm -hmm. The patent. PM is just really a temporary thing. Well, TM it it is it though this is trademark. There's a difference between trademark and yes. patent. And yeah. patent. Uh, patent is something you have to have in order to put your intellectual property you know on hold the government so you can get what what i call temporary uh application mm -hmm. but enough. until it really gets accepted and certified mm -hmm. and paid for the government yeah okay you got i forget what how much it is whether it's 150 bucks or 75 bucks but until it's paid you really don't have much to yeah. prove yeah. anything. Well, uh, by the way, you know who's not here tonight is Brian. Hmm. First yeah. night, I think, in maybe all the time that we've had him on. <coughs> Hope he's okay. Hope everything's fine. I'll check him. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so back to copywriting. Because I was going to write, uh, I'm thinking of copywriting the name Remdiz Remdesivir. There you go. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> so you, you plaster copyright on it, but what's to say you haven't plagiarized it? Well, that's true. There's you nothing to make, say I haven't plagiarized have it, okay. but someone so, else well, can the people have made apply for the same thing. But, but I mean, right. you I know, see. Uh, 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 look, I mean, uh, the biggest plagiarist in America is Donald Trump. Where did he get Make America Great from? Where is he? Ronald Reagan. Reagan. Oh. Yeah, where where does Biden talking. get his speeches? From uh, yeah. English. No, uh, we didn't ask. We didn't ask that. Doesn't matter. I'm just giving you another plagi plagiarizer. Has yeah. a, a lady who uh, went to high school. She could write it. Yeah, yeah. How he does. Yeah. I know. I, just to make it easy, so you can read it. So, so I, everybody, I'm glad you now know how things go with copyright. Okay. Wow. All right. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Alex. What's yeah. new with Donald Trump? <laughs> <laughs> what's What's with Donald Trump? Yeah. 
Hey, there's no more Florida uh, convention. Yeah, you know why, don't you? What? Said it wasn't going to be safe. And uh, who said it wasn't going to be safe? Uh, Trump said. Really? I'll bet you any amount of money you got. It's because the people in Florida said, quite frankly, we don't think it's safe to have it here. So you better find somewhere else to have it. And he went back to what, Charlotte or wherever that was? Uh, He said the Charlotte thing's going to be very small. No, said, but uh, I'm saying he's acting like he came up with the idea. But I think, <laughs> I think it was the people down in Florida going, "I'm uh, sorry, it's unsafe." And considering the, what's going on right now, and he had to agree to it. He said cases are up, and he doesn't want anybody to. Uh, oh yeah, it's- right, right. He didn't care about it in Oklahoma City, did he? I mean, Tulsa rather. He didn't care. He, he didn't give a shit. Did. He cares. He didn't but, care, uh, Phil. <laughs> he was being told how, by by doctors and by everybody. That was a good one, Don't Phil. do it. Yeah. Don't do it in Tulsa. It's the warm and fuzzy, you know? It's the new Trump. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. How many, how many days is it going to take him to come out and say uh, that it was his idea to wear masks? Nobody he, was thinking about that before him. Yeah. It is. It is his idea. Yeah. It yeah. struck me that it's not safe to have the convention, but let's go back to school. You know, yeah, let's go back to school. Back That's safe. And, and and by the way, uh, you know, I mean, it was safe to hold that one in Tulsa. He, in spite yeah. of the fact, and the one in front of the, uh, um, what do you call it, in front of... Uh, uh, the church. Uh, the, no, the, the monument, uh, you know. Mount Rushmore. The, Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore. It was okay to do it there, but no, I've decided that it isn't healthy to do it in Florida. Okay, good for you, Donald. Boy, I'm what glad you're team? you're on the uh, on the team. What the thing is that the schools uh, that that there's such a low rate of virus amongst people under 18. And that other schools around the world have already reopened, and they're not having. Well, that's so let's not see. In, in the last high school I taught in, there were a yeah. hundred plus adults, uh, either instructional or non-instructional. Let me. You, by the way, Charlie has his hand up. Charlie has his hand up. Charlie has his hand up. Charlie. Yeah, I just want to say this first. You heard it here first. The only reason why. There has been low spread of COVID among kids. It's because the damn schools were closed. That's now correct. Now they open up the schools and the kids are going to be congregating together. You watch it skyrocket. Yeah, they're yeah. human beings. Yeah, I want to know where you where you, where, where, where you where you got this number, Phil, from a bunch of people who weren't sending their kids to school this time of year. Uh, well, these are. They, these are European schools where kids oh, on schools are open they right handle now. They handle it very different than us. Yeah, European you can't schools. can't compare it's that. Different situation. Also, there, uh, yeah. I think there was less than 30 cases of uh, COVID amongst uh, kids under 18, but there's usually uh, thousands of cases of influenza from uh phil kids. we're not talking about influenza oh, you know, they're comparing it and they're saying you can't compare it to influenza phil and the fact is that in europe right now their their transmission rate is almost down to zero because they took the proper steps to nip this thing in the bud and so those kids are going to have a lower rate just simply because you know they probably should send their kids back to school because they're not infected. But this country is like this massive Petri dish, for crying out loud. My money's on the Northwestern Wildcat, Charlie Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny okay. about um, the New York Times is just reporting that has Trump calls for schools to fully reopen? His son's school says it will not. <laughs> yeah, of course. Donald's going to get all mad and take his son out and put him into another school. Yeah, you should put him in a public school. Just yeah. charm right in there. Let him, it's just like we don't need to get tested, but everybody around Trump gets tested every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they get their results fast. Yeah, they get like a two hours. We're you- still waiting for Betsy DeVos to actually finally set foot in a public school. Yeah. That, that would be She's nice. never been in one. Really? Let me, let me ask you a question, Alex, if, yeah. and Robert and the other guys. How insulated do you think Trump is if you want to get to him? to talk to him like how many people have to be tested is it almost impossible to? Get oh i don't think you could get in to see him if you didn't have a test and Not have a recent test. one okay yeah i don't i don't think so no 
And I bet you his kids the same. They're probably nowhere near to be found. You know, they, he keeps talking about uh, Biden being in the basement, which is not true. B Biden was in the basement for a couple of months when it, this thing was at its height, and he's an older guy, and he didn't want to get it, just like I didn't leave the house here. Mm -hmm. But he leaves the basement now a lot, okay? Yet Trump never leaves the White House, never, you know, yeah. Yeah. you know, uh, 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 makes that a sure thing. Uh, he, uh, I'm sure he's probably down in the basement too and only comes out to give these speeches with, I saw a page of one of his speeches, double space, big print, and only half the page taken up with the writing on the speech. Like my mother does. Well, and then, as he's reading it, his finger is down there, going, <laughs> you know, I'm surprised, to, you know, I'm, 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 it's amazing. The wheels on the bus go round and oh, round. Oh, man. The man's a moron. He's a fucking moron. Hey, Robert, what did you teach? What? Um, first part of my career was 15 years of teaching social studies. Then I got booted upstairs to be in charge of student data, computerization of student data, because... I was one of the few people in my district that knew how to turn on a computer. This is back in 1988. So, and then I had a parallel career where for 38 years, I just retired lately. Um, I was a professional gambler, actually. Really? Yeah, I like successful. Atlantic uh, City or uh, Las No, Vegas? no, no. Mostly the last few years at home, I only bet thoroughbred horse racing. Really? I taught wow. seminars. I belonged to a group that many of us did it professionally for a time i took the leave from my school district and uh, did that full time the reason i went back is because of children and needing benefits and so on and i you know it was easier for me to do both yeah. but yeah i bet thoroughbred horse races i only gave up this year because after 38 years well you I know if you go back to school now you could work. have the best of both worlds because you can point out a kid and say I'll bet that kid's going to be dead from COVID in five yeah. months. Oh, yeah. What's the odds are under? The, the, joke, the jokes abounded back then. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, uh, the, the idea of, of sending kids to school at this point is still, I think, wrong. I mean, because kids, <laughs> to, by their basic socialization, cannot maintain a social distance. You know, no. that's just not in the DNA of being a kid. Uh, and yes, it would be wonderful to be able to send them back. But first, you better clean up your states, and you better yeah. clean up the, the country, and we better get ourselves a vaccination. You know, which, by the way, the president <laughs> acts like you know he's inventing the vaccination, and that America has come up with a vaccination. <laughs> it's it's Oxford that's come up with the vaccination, and second in line, I can't remember who's second in line, but third in line is China. Yeah. No, well, Pfizer, Pfizer got one that they're working no on. Pfizer's not working on one. They are oh, simply making not. they are simply making the Oxford version. Am I right, uh, Jeff? Am I right? Yeah, Pfizer has got a great part of this, they and do. that is they have the expertise and the equipment to manufacture many of these drugs. These, these other companies who are developing them. Are small little startup companies. Yeah. Labs, yeah, yeah. And, yeah. They and, they have a bunch of engineers and and uh, chemists and working. Uh, there. Oxford in England uh, is the one coming out what they consider the prime right. candidate right now. And I think Pfizer's got to do. And and more. am I right? I think the other country, uh, one of the other two countries, is China. And God <laughs> forbid, ladies and gentlemen, that China should come up with the uh, COVID. Uh, uh, vaccine because you think they're going to sell it to the United States and the, uh, with what's been going yeah, on? They'll, they'll tell you to shove it up your ass. No, yeah. they'll just charge a shit ton. Yeah, yeah. They'll they'll sell it to the U.S. because their money is green. Yeah, they might have been willing but, to help us, but not now. Not because of the great the great diplomacy our president yeah. involves himself. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, Robert. Uh, yeah, now, did you ever read the racing form? Really? What? You're time. changing the subject. Uh, you know who You're changing the was? subject, Phil. No. Oh. You're changing the subject. Uh, I'm sorry, what did he do? He, he was a, a syndicated writer for the form. He had the back page. Yeah, I can I can. Oh, I, can I didn't honestly him. read. I can never read the articles him. in the form, oh, ever. 
right. Phil, do you I mind? No we real, were talking about no something music. else. Yeah, yeah well, I was interested in this I, I know, but, you know, one thing at a time. He's going to ask for a tick like that. Like Ram. <laughs> Does he run better on... Is it... Well, I'm not gonna talk a about mutter? That. Or... Yeah, doesn't it? <laughs> usually, uh, my uncle on horses out in uh, Jersey. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, we'll change it from the ramble to the mutter, okay? Phil, we're betting on a dog. What? God, people who take the name of this show seriously. Did you uh, did you get a hold of Brian, or was he available? Or? Uh, no, uh, no <laughs> answer. No he answer. might he be working the baseball game. He might be working or something. He, yeah, the baseball games on the 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 uh, Giants oh, right. and the Dodgers and the Yankees uh, won tonight. They beat uh, the Nationals. Mm. Now you watch the game, right? I did because you are a well. are you a Yankees fan? Yes. Uh, okay. First of all, no crowd. But were right. they running the sound effects? Yes. yes. How did that feel? Uh, you know, Cheesy. it feels normal. Yeah, but it, it, it feels, because it would be vapid if you were sitting there. Well, tonight, there was an ESPN game, and the announcers, uh, A-Rod and, and Matt Vaskersian, were sitting in the studio in Bristol, Connecticut, doing right. the game. <laughs> they were not at the ballpark. <laughs> they don't need to be, do they? Uh, well, really. normally they are. Yeah. They're only seeing one monitor. They don't have the, yeah. all the cameras. They don't have the live view in front of them. You know what I did, Rob, when I watched the game? I can't stand A-Rod. I, I uh, muted the TV and I synced up the radio to hear Sterling. I've done that. I do yeah. that during the playoffs. But did, did they, how did you feel about the, uh, the uh, you know, the laugh, oh, the, the laugh track? Yeah. I don't know what yeah, you yeah, do. You know, I think it's better that, because at least you hear something. Otherwise, you're going to hear yeah. nothing and it's... I think it, it it makes it feel more normal, even though you know that like when when the when uh, the when the away team strikes out, they raise the volume, right? So you hear, <laughs> you know, everybody cheers a little bit, right? How'd you feel about not seeing anybody in the stands? Oh, the Giants! I mean, the Dodge Dodgers have the whole yeah. back with it's fake good. cutouts it's of people. It's bizarre looking <laughs> to me. I don't. And like what happens that. when they cheer? Is are there people in back of them making them go up and down? Yeah, that would be funny if they had people with like wood, you know, and they were making yeah. them go up and down. Yeah, like, what did I hear that they were changing the colors of the of the people? They, you know, they had like lights or something. They were able to change uh, change them up or at Dodger Stadium? No, um, I, I don't know which stadium it was, but the cardboard cutouts uh, they were able to to do to change them up, and then hmm. also they had uh, sounds of people leaving, uh, you know, during the seventh inning. I didn't and, hear that. Uh, at City Field for the Mets, they have cutouts, but you pay for them. Right. It's for charity. So what they're doing is raising money for charity, which isn't a bad idea. Yeah. You yeah. pay so much to have your cutout in your yes. seat. That's now, really bizarre. I saw cutouts tonight at Dodger Stadium with people with masks on. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> I saw that as well. Now, yeah. Did they change the name as Shea Stadium? Is that why it's called City it's, it's a different they field altogether. Yeah, city, so, city, Shea yeah. is no longer. Oh. Yeah, city Field is... Uh, is so the, the, the uh, opening uh, ceremonies tonight, the players all got around the field. You know, they, do, they introduce everybody like and there's people in the crowd. So, you know, your, you know, Was uh, Washington Nationals. And they <laughs> introduce everybody. And yeah. then the players, when they all got out on the field, and I guess they're doing this league-wide. Because they took this black crepe, I guess, material, and they, they had like, you know, go around the diamond, and then all the players picked it up and held it. I guess, it's the, and, and there's the whole thing about Black Lives Matters, and there's a logo on everybody's uh, mound, the BL, uh, BLM, I guess it is, mm -hmm. right? And then they do the national anthem, and players like uh, Mookie Betts took a knee tonight and his two new players his two new teammates put their white guys put their arms on his shoulders and it was very uh, you know uh, they had a video uh, that was produced about Black White Lives Matters it was very political the open was very much very different from so you go to a baseball game it's just odd to me the world has changed and and yeah go to a baseball game one of the things that hit me immediately and i know i'm going to get if this was if i was saying this on like network television is that damn i can't get away from this anywhere i'm, I'm i've been waiting for baseball i want to see baseball 
and I, and I, I can't forget. I can't just have this three hours where all I think about is baseball. Yeah, I wanted to hear baseball stories and stuff like that. You know. Yeah, I mean, they interviewed Aaron Boone in a pre in the pregame show. He didn't talk about baseball. Yeah, I don't like that. I want to talk about well, what's it, going on politically, it, 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 and you know, I uh, in a way, I think a lot of the um, uh, emphasis has been on Black Lives Matter, but you know, there are a lot of other people who have also been put upon. I mean, how about the, how about the Hispanics in this country? Yeah. How about yeah. how about the Asians in this country? You know, the Asians have kept their mouths shut for years, and they were portrayed. If anybody was portrayed as servants and coolies and everything else. In movies, it was it was the Asians. I just think sort of that up. we need to broaden the whole yeah, the whole thing. You know, I got to tell you today. But we'll never stop talking. Then it, uh, here's what we'll never we'll never. Can you not going to enjoy anything anymore? There's no more like you know. This is national pastime. Well, you're supposed to go to a game or watch a game with a beer, and you're supposed to forget about life for a few minutes. Yeah, and hopefully you're there with people of all races and creeds, and you're all well, enjoying then, yeah, the same I thing mean, together. Well, yeah, I, the yeah, thing yes. is, today, you know, I get back to what I said a couple of days ago. Today I went out, I went down the street, because it was my weekly trek to Popeye's, okay? <laughs> and um, uh, I, I went down there, and I went down 16th Avenue, and I've got to tell you that between my street mm-hmm. and Malcolm X Boulevard, the, the next street down, okay, I think if if five percent of the people were wearing masks, I'd be amazed. <gasps> Maybe it was ten percent. Okay, I'll give them that. And I'm I'm going back to what I said earlier. You know, yes, Black Lives Matter. So wear a fucking mask. Yeah. You know, you especially if you're black and you believe that Black Lives Matter. And if, by the way, if you believe Black Lives Matter, don't start shooting up your neighborhood. Okay. I mean, black lives matter in every way, shape, and form, not just uh, with cops hassling you. It has to do with the way everybody teaches everybody else, treats everybody else. And I, I just think that, that, uh, that when I saw this, it was, like, it was like I was walking down the street and it, I was running a gauntlet, avoiding people because they, were, they weren't wearing masks or... Either that or they were wearing them as chin guards, you know, and I'm going, come on, I believe black lives matter. That's why I'm wearing the mask in my neighborhood. Hey, Alex, have you brought the uh, your cleaning staff back to your house yet? Oh, yeah. My, my, oh, yeah, the cleaning woman comes. Now. She comes. Do you yeah. wear a mask? And does she wear a mask while uh, she's in your house? I wear a mask. Um, well, we we no, I don't wear a mask, and she doesn't wear a mask, but we keep social distanced. Ah, because we yeah. I, we had her come yesterday for the first time, and yeah. I I told my wife I said ask her if she would wear a mask, and we'll wear masks. Well, the reason the, the, the reason to wear a mask is if you're not able to socially distance, and I'm usually in here in the office, and she's in the bedroom cleaning. When she comes in here to clean, I go to another room. You know. Uh, so I, that's what we're doing. And she's, you know, she, she doesn't have it, you know, and, and, uh, I don't have it and Marjorie doesn't have it. So I, I, you know, it's, it's, we're pretty safe about it, but we do keep our distance. There's no question about that. And we still do put a mask on every time somebody rings the doorbell with a package for us. Yeah. So. Can I ask a question going back a topic? Sure. Um, sure. Why do we play the Star Spangled Banner in before sporting events in the first place. Now, I don't mean I, that well, you know, I was not gonna ask patriotic. It. Right. I, I mean uh, that because it just strikes me as curious. We go to a movie, we don't play it. We go right. to other forms of entertainment, and we don't play it. Yeah. What's the connection between the Star Spangled Banner and a sporting event? I've never really understood I, I, that. I quite, and quite frankly, yeah, yeah. until I was, uh, 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 until some kids were old enough to know better, they thought the last word of the Star Spangled Banner was play ball. Play ball, <laughs> you right. Know. Uh, didn't uh, didn't it, the it, military it, have something to do with their support for baseball and it, it had something to do with that? I think you're right, you know, Phil. I think so. Phil, yeah, Phil, I, I don't disagree. I think that there's a, like, football is a very militaristic kind of game if you stop and think of a lot of the nomenclature. Uh, I think it, and Army versus the Navy. military had something to do with support for these Really. Games. Yeah. Yes. Right, yes. 
Yeah. So, yeah, I think it started I, out like I a, seem to remember something. A promotion of some kind or yeah. whatever. It's mm. the same thing as like at Yankee Stadium they do God bless America at right. the yeah, uh, But I do I do stretch. agree with 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 Robert that um uh, because I was going to ask, I was going to say the same thing, oddly enough, and then I forgot to bring it up. But th and that's my point. Not not anything against Black Lives Matters or Black Lives Matter or anything like that. But I'm going to a sporting event. I'm going or I'm watching it on television, and I'm just looking to escape. All day long, you're bombarded with this stuff. Why do they have to do it? Why does it have to permeate sports? It's, Why can't it, that be? It's PR. Yeah. Plain and simple, so it's too. PR. It's just now, PR. What's his name? It, Colin they, they, Ka they really don't give a shit. But they Colin do. Kaepernick yeah. got fired for taking a knee during the Star Spangled Banner. And you know right? something? They, He's, would hire is he, him, wait a minute. and is now he, it's accepted. Is he playing football again? No. 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 But so that's so I mean. don't, but don't get hypocritical acceptable. with me and say, oh, well, we're, we, uh, you know, here at football, we're very happy to have all you people, you know, do a, uh, uh, you know, uh, bend the knee at the national anthem now. They're you all people? like, we're, yeah, yeah, you people. And, and yet, Colin Kaepernick isn't playing football again. Wouldn't that be the perfect, hey, we were wrong, you were right? Yes, Charlie. Well, according to Google, the Star Spangled Banner was not sung before National Football League games until World War II. Uh -huh. Yeah. They How did to honor the troops or whatever during World War II as they were fighting for the country. How but, about baseball? When did they start doing it for baseball? Well, I'll have to ask that. Yeah. But, I mean, the fact of the matter is that, uh, that you know, if they really want to honor, uh, uh, say, Black Lives Do Matter, and, hey, we honor people taking the knee now, they should also hire Kaepernick back. <laughs> hey, hey, does anybody know if kids still do the uh, Pledge of Allegiance be at school? Mm -hmm. so. oh, they sure do. They, do. they, they sure don't do, do that anymore? No, they do. Do they? They do. And I remember when I was a kid... The national and uh, the uh, pledge of allegiance was different. No under God. No and under God. There was no under God. That yeah. came in. That, that came in about the uh, about the mid fifties during the McCarthy yeah. era, uh, and it was meant to go after the communists and put in that under God. And I always found that wrong because if you don't believe in God, you shouldn't have to say it. Yes, right. Charlie. Uh, actually, the. Uh, Star Spangled Banner was sung in baseball games first on May 15th, 1862. Oh, wow. that's early. Long before wow. the national anthem. Yep. Yeah, I, wow. didn't think, I didn't think that song was written until like, like, uh, oh, that's no, right, no. it was written. It was, in, yeah, but, but no, but what it was. It was written it, by oh, Francis it wasn't, let, Let's yeah. go back to the history of this song because then it, you'll, you'll say, well, maybe we should stop playing it. Um, yeah. Francis Scott Key wrote a poem. Yeah, that was it. It sat around for a while, and somebody said, "Well, we ought to put this to music. What do we got?" And there was a drinking song called yeah. "Anacreon yeah. in Heaven," That's right. which people sang at bars when they got really shit ass, shit faced when they got drunk. Shit faced, right? yeah. Right, and and they said, "Oh, that's a good song," and they put it to that. Plus the fact there are three other verses we never sing. Yeah. yeah. You never you know. hear it. So it basically it's a drinking song, and it wasn't made the national anthem till when, Charlie? Do you have that listed there? I think it was like 1936 or something. Something like that, yeah. yeah. Up until wow. that point, we didn't have one. Nope, we didn't have a national anthem. And um, uh, my How old argument. Was America the Beautiful. Um, is it as old as those songs? Or is it, that come nah, later? Nah, 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 nah. I'm trying to think. Then, of course, we had God Save the Queen. Right. You know. Uh, but uh, the fact of the matter is, is that I always said we should do away with the, Nash with the Star Spangled Banner as our national anthem for a couple of reasons. Number one, it's a horrible song to sing. There's yeah, a high note tough. in there that yeah, nobody... One of the hardest songs ever. They, they, they used to use that as an audition piece at the New York Met, and if somebody could get through that, they could get through anything. Uh, 1931. 1931. Huh. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then uh, a lot of people were like myself were saying we should really do away with it. It's bad for several reasons. Number one, it's a song about war. We, you know, it's not about it's not about peace and love and hey how wonderful our country is and so on. Uh, Listen, 
I'm all for patriotism, but here's what I notice. I'm not, and this but... is what fosters the question is when I go to a ball game, I find I'm the only guy that's sitting, that's standing up respectfully and quietly. Everybody else is conducting conversations. They're scratching oh, yeah. their balls, you know, like they're doing all <laughs> manner of things that, you know, that just kind of water down the fact that this is supposed to be an act of patriotism to the point where I start thinking to myself, what's the use? You know, like it doesn't well, fit somehow. I see. I, I, Robert, I'm against what we consider prescribed versions of patriotism because they're all simply paying lip service. Anybody, if you were a communist and you were hiding out in the United States and the national anthem came on, you You'd would stand see. up, put your hand yeah. over your heart and bow your yeah. head so you could pass as an American, okay? Yeah. So there's nothing patriotic about that song. There's nothing patriotic about the flag. Right. You know? I mean, it is just simply... It's they're our... It's our symbols. It, it's our logo. Okay? It's our logo for yeah, our country. Yeah, they're symbols. Yeah. There's our logo, Howard. Yes. Do I have to stand up now? <laughs> but, I mean, the thing is that... You got I, a lighter? I think a lot of these things are, are very jingoistic, you know? And, oh, you didn't stand up for the national anthem. If some guy sat there, they go, you're not standing up. Well, yeah, why? I, you know, I'm an American. I believe in this country. I went, I, I was in the military. I, you know, I did what I had to do. I pay my taxes every year. Why do I have to stand for this stupid fucking song that is all about war, doesn't speak anything about the beauty of our country? I mean, there are a lot of other songs that we have, like America the Beautiful, that speak about how lovely our country is. And I once suggested to Pete Seeger that this land is your land would be a yeah. great national anthem. Yeah. And he said he didn't, he didn't want to see that happen because it, 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 people would be marching off to war to that song. And he yeah. said it, it's too yeah. pretty a song, it's too special a song to have that happen to it. And I, I had to agree with him, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but... Uh, and by the way, if you've ever heard all the all the lyrics of uh, "This Land Is Your Land," there's some very left wing lyrics in there. Yeah. yeah. When I was a kid, a Pete uh -oh. Seeger had a boat, and he used to sail up and down. And the you Hudson took a picture River. of it, I know. No, no, he used to sail up and down the Hudson River, and they got to ride on the boat. They would do music on on the boat, and uh, you could hear it, uh, you know, on the shore. And he would, you know, he'd go up mm -hmm. to like Bear it's Mountain. called the Wanderer. Yeah, oh, his boat. Yeah, it's called the Wanderer. Yeah. I used to see as a kid. I mean, that was in the 60s, mm -hmm. early 60s. Yeah. Yeah. I thought Woody Guthrie wrote that song. He did. Oh, he did? Okay. Yeah, no, I was just saying Pete Seeger said to me, because Pete was close with Woody, okay? Uh, okay. And he, he simply said, you know, would you want people marching off to war to that? And I go, well, no. no. Uh, but, you know, I, I, I it, 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 Star Spangled Banner is about bombs bursting in air and, you know. Mm -hmm. Whatever, and it's it's not. I don't think it's a good representation for us. Is, yeah. Have you, if you haven't heard the comedy routine that Albert Brooks did, the right. writing of the national anthem, yes. hysterical. The auditions yeah. for hysterical. the national anthem, yeah. The, the right, the audition of the national hysterical. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, we had a lot of other songs. I mean, the, you know, uh, "America the Beautiful" is certainly a, a good idea of that. Uh, God bless America, I wouldn't want because the name God is in there. You know, and I think that, hey, you know, you want something everybody can feel comfortable with. Who let the dogs out? Who, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be good. I like that. That's well, good... there's no ethnic slurs, you know? right? There's right, no right. religious <laughs> connotation. Dog <laughs> Work with there's me the, here. There's a Republican dog whistle there. Uh. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. Yeah. I got to listen closer. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh, the uh, the uh, mayor of uh, Port uh, Portland got tear gassed. Yeah. yeah. You see that? <laughs> they picked. I think they picked the wrong guy to tear gas. Yeah. You know. They got they no tact at all. By the secret police. By the secret yeah. police. By the yeah. Gest by by Trump's Gestapo. Yeah. Yeah. By the way. There's a great interview that you all ought to look for with a man named Chris David. He was the United States Naval Academy graduate who got a beating. Oh, yeah. The guy that everybody talked about. He's not 65. I don't know how that got out there. He's actually 53. Yeah. But, but what the interview revealed is that he's actually a disabled vet. 
And he's a constitutionalist. Like he really, in the Naval Academy, studied the Constitution carefully. Mm -hmm. And his question for those officers of whatever kind you want to call them was, you're breaking the, you're, you're defeating the Constitution by being here because I'm not in a pub, uh, a federal place. I'm on a city street. Yeah. Why is it that you're doing this? And next thing you know, he started getting a beating to the point where they broke his hand in, in two, two places. places. He has to have surgery and they pepper sprayed his eyes to the point where for about five minutes he was blind. It's really a good interview because if you listen to him, <laughs> you'll see that the last thing on earth this guy is an anarchist. He's like, he's a dude, you know? Like, yeah. Hey, you know, it comes from, their authority comes from uh, 40 U.S. Code. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Who gives and, a shit? Uh, Who so gives a shit? <laughs> Who that? gives a shit? 40 U.S. Who gives Code. a shit? Who gives they have a shit? no authority he, unless they're on federal land. Look, look it up, Charlie. That They have the authority. look it up. They, they, know, they only have federal 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 federal. Okay, read it to us, Phil. It's too yeah. long to read. Well, read it to us. We got time. Read it to us. You got 10 okay. minutes. In general, you got 10 minutes. And, uh, uh, yeah, wait a minute, it's moving. Uh, <laughs> oh, boy, you're getting to look like Trump reading a speech. Yeah. Yeah, uh, let me get down to it. Uh, officers and agents, designation. The secretary may designate employees of Department of Homeland Security, including employees. Uh, when was this written? Uh, this uh, this was from the uh, Cornell uh, uh, law.cornell.edu, Cornell Law School. Wait a minute, and but when did you say this, this thing was written? Uh, what do you mean, when was it written? It's the code. It's when, the, when was the code written? In 2002, it's the home. It couldn't security. have been because there wasn't a Department of Homeland Security at that no, time. No, right just here. was getting ready to start then. That was no, right there was this thing written in 1787 called the Constitution. <laughs> and that, that, that's that. Uh, I've Kim heard of that. Yeah, yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, look, this uh, it, it, there's a Homeland Security Act of 2002. The Secretary of Homeland Security in this section referred to as the Secretary shall protect the buildings, grounds, property that are owned, occupied, and secured by the federal government, including well, any agency. They, they put up a fence. That right. protects it. No, no, no. Right. There, they put up a fence. Getting jackbooted thugs, getting jackbooted thugs to go beat people up because they want this to protect talks, the building is not what that their, infers. Listen to me. You asked me a question. This talks of their powers of enforcement. This says that they can carry guns. Uh, and uh, so I sent it to you, Alex, if you want to look no, at I, it. No, I, 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 so, should, I should can anything you send me, Phil. Uh, Don't okay, waste so your time. Look up uh, uh, U.S. Code 1315. Phil, and, let me ask you a calm question. You were involved with municipal police, am I right, from what I seem yeah. to recall? You know uh, better than I do that the FBI, if you were to make a collar, the FBI can't just come in and usurp your jurisdiction and take the collar unless it's a involving kidnapping or crimes across state lines mm -hmm. like there's certain criteria yes. otherwise the fbi have no jurisdiction even if it involves murdering three or four people why don't you i'll give, I'll give you a good example i'll give you a good example robert i'll give you a good example the fbi will not come in on a kidnapping case for three days yeah, and absolutely. the reason for that is that they can't come into it until it's conceived that the person who kidnapped the person could have taken them over state lines. Cross right. state uh, lines, yeah. Uh, uh, not to change it, Brian wrote me back. He says he's watching the game. Mm, okay. Uh, and he's tuning in and out here. And there. Uh, Priorities. Uh, so if you, if you look up U.S. Code 1315... It'll it'll tell you what the federal uh, jurisdictions are that allow them to do what they did. Well, I however, think it's probably going to be however, it's probably going to be taken to court and put into question, Phil. I yes. been for a long time. It, yeah, it doesn't They're matter if it's been there a long time. It isn't until now that we've needed to take it to court. Yeah, the Department of Justice Inspector General is investigating it right now. So. All right, let them investigate. That's the code that gives yep. them. The well, authority. they may say the code is illegal and it's not well, right. That, then if that's it's unconstitutional. The it could be thrown that's, out. Who, that's that's who, puts, the, who puts the put, who puts that code Supreme into force? Even was it passed is. by Congress? Was it passed by the Senate? I think it was. You think but it the was? The code says protect. It says protect federal property. 
Right. The right. arrests they're making, though, Phil, are on, in many cases, and municipal they're, streets. They're, they're and allowed they don't to make have that arrest. jurisdiction. Robert, they're allowed they're, to make those arrests according to this, and they're allowed to hold them for Phil, 30 days. Phil, they're jackboot thugs of the president yeah, of the yeah, United what, States. All, I'm, I'm telling you what it says. They the are jackboot thugs. They are, they are doing something that is wholly illegal because they're not protecting those federal buildings. And those federal buildings, quite frankly, are still standing. I read the whole thing, and I'm telling you that according to this code, Good. You, uh, you, and you that's read fine. it. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Sorry, but you, it's shameful it's, for this country to be doing I, things I, like yeah. that. I understand. It is, just, just because, it, just because you Navy felt, felt. Vet wasn't doing anything to a, a federal building. He was just standing there in the fucking street, and so, they beat the crap out of him. And so it. was the mayor of, of Portland. The mayor so, of Portland wasn't demonstrating. So these, these these officers will be held to task. I'm sure. Oh no, they the, won't. No, they will not. Oh no, they won't. Well, hey, how do you, what are you a soothsayer? I'm. I'm, I'm no. I. I know. I know what will happen know because Trump is president of the United States, and he's the one who called these stormtroopers to come in and quell but, human right, human free speech, human rights no, of free speech. It was him. It was. Uh, it was uh, Wolf. Chad, uh, uh, no, yeah. at the orders of Bill Barr and the President of the United well, States. It has to be between Wolf and Bill Would Barr. Would you agree that the buck stops at the President's office? The President oh. does. Oh, but I, I agree. In the executive yeah. branch. They're particular. following the law, and as the law is written. He's responsible for <laughs> what goes on under his watch. Yes, Jeff. Right. There are several things that are more important from one state to the other state as compared to the United States. Because the, those states were formed before the United States. And so they have a lot of goals and skills that, that these characters don't have. So are you okay with them uh, defacing and trying to damage and-, and No, uh, no, uh, but what I'm, no, yeah. Phil, I'm not, but just in the same way is I'm not okay with passing counterfeit money, but the punishment has to fit the crime. Yeah. Absolutely. You're shooting Probably a honest. fly with an elephant gun. Well, and in fact, you're probably inciting more and more protesters to show And by up. the way, by the way, they did see Robert, the, uh, Phil, be quiet a second, Robert. Uh, the, the, what's what they said was, and uh, oh, we're almost out of time here. What they said was is that the demonstrations were almost down to a small trickle, okay? Yeah, they were until old. until the government came in and did this stuff, and now it's turned into a whole scale riot. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So we have about a minute left. Phil just left. I don't know where he went. He went into yeah, the dugout, body. huh? He went into the dugout, right? He went into, yeah, he went the, into dugout. the dugout or, or to buy a hot dog. Yeah. He's he's taking his shirt off. He, he uh, certainly didn't social distance when he bit his into name the off. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know. And that seems to oh, here he comes in from the dugout. He's, back, he's back from the dugout. Everybody now, quit, quit talking hitting. about him. Came back from get the dugout. The dugout. You went in the dugout. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to uh, get any popcorn? No. <laughs> get a beer? Beer? Down the locker room there, Phil? My ice cream? Garlic yeah. fries. I have measurements for the in the dugout and yeah. for the locker room. Yeah. This one don't need new rugs. Anyway, anyway, uh, you know, it's, it's just uh, I'm, I'm, it's it, it, we're we're at war with our own country. Okay. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah. and, and uh, maybe maybe that Second Amendment is a good idea, Phil. Yeah, anyway. Here's the jack booted thugs. Yeah. Here's the jack booted thugs. Where, where's the NRA? You know, he, 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 he doesn't mind. He, he, Phil minds riots, but when it happens to be a riot by the government, he doesn't mind it. So, yeah, whatever. <laughs> anyway, hey, listen. Both uh, ways. Thank you, Robert. Jeez, I love you. You're terrific. You're wonderful. And Charlie, you are great as always. And of course, Howard always. Howard is kind of our mime of the group. He's always holding up flags and doing little things, and I, I love having you there, uh, Phil. Oh, thank. Uh, Thank you very wow. much. Thanks to John Larkin, who tonight was known as Gil what is well, it? Well, Gilbert Godfrey. Gilbertified. Galaxies. Rob, thank you, thank you, Jeff, and thank you, Rob. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give you a big wave back here. Okay. 
There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our citizen panel for tonight. Let me uh, get rid of them here. The next show on is Jack Bishop, and he's got a thing called The uh, Intersection, and it will be here until, yes, until uh, 1 o'clock this morning, and he'll be taking calls with the citizen panel as well, so you can join him. In the meantime, I'll see you here again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life, and in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her. And stay safe. And please, especially if you're in my neighborhood, wear a mask, okay? See you tomorrow.